Hey everyone and welcome to another spooky video. Today I thought I would do a story time about my various paranormal experiences. I know not everyone believes in ghosts, but I do and I even love the stuff that's supposedly fake and scripted because I just love the entertainment value of it and so I hope that you guys enjoy this video even if you don't really believe in ghosts. I know a lot of the things I'm about to talk about could be explained away by being faulty wiring or what have you, a hallucination, but I still want to tell you all my stories. And there are a lot of them. Not all of them are juicy though, a lot of them are just little minor things, but there are, there are some good ones in there. So these are going to be in somewhat chronological order. I have them sorted based on where I lived or where I was when this event happened, but within those places it's not necessarily in order. Also I apologize if you can hear all the construction outside. <laughs> it's not ghosts, it's machinery. So we're going to start off with the farm. It's where I grew up. It's not the first home I lived in, but it's where I have most of my memories and I lived there until I was about 12 or so, 11 or 12. And my dad still has this house to this day, but I didn't have a whole lot that happened at the farm. It didn't really give me many creepy vibes. Even my dad isn't convinced that the place is haunted. He hasn't had too much weird activity, so I don't know if it's haunted, but there are just a few little things that happen there. I would sometimes hear my name being called, but I think that's very common. A lot of people experience that, and my siblings did too back then. You'd swear you, you'd hear your parent calling your name when you'd go and say what, and they'd say, oh, we weren't calling you, or maybe they're not even home. So there's that one. That's kind of basic. But these next two things on my list are definitely a lot more creepy than that. So this one thing, I didn't even consider it to be paranormal until years later, and I'll explain why. So when I was a kid, I spent a lot of time in this one bedroom. At one point, all three of us kids shared the bedroom, and then my brother moved downstairs to his own room, and when he moved downstairs, I got to claim the top bunk on the bunk bed, because previously I slept on the bottom bunk, and he had the top bunk. So he got his own room, I got to claim the top bunk, and weird stuff would happen. I would always wake up with my covers pulled off. And I'm talking like pulled completely to the foot of the bed, not thrown to the side or anything, just completely pulled to the foot of the bed. And I didn't think much of it. I'm like, well, maybe I'm just kicking them off in my sleep. And maybe that is the explanation, who knows? But it's not like it was hot and I had to kick the covers off, maybe in the summer sometimes, but like, it's not like the bunk bed was so high that all the heat was rising that I was kicking my covers off. I don't buy that at all. I would be cold. I'd wake up. My covers are way at the foot of the bed, like past my feet. And I'd have to sit up, reach over and grab the covers and pull them back over and go back to sleep. But at the time I thought, well, I must be kicking them off because like what other explanation is there? And then it wasn't until years later when I didn't even live there anymore that we were telling scary stories around the campfire. And my brother was saying how when he slept on that bunk bed, he would always wake up at night with his covers pulled off. And I was like, are you serious? Because up until then, I didn't think much of it, but it happened to him too, where he would always wake up with his covers pulled off and it only happened on that bed. And sure, yeah, maybe we were both just hot and we kicked our covers off, but I swear that was not it. And I'm still blown away by this to this date. So this next story involves the same bunk bed. I was a side sleeper at the time and I would usually sleep facing the room because the bunk bed was pushed up against the wall. And the one time I woke up from a dream, just woke up, opened my eyes, and there was a person standing in the room watching me sleep. And I only saw the person for maybe a second, a second and a half before they quickly ducked down beneath the bunk bed. My heart was pounding, but I was so freaked out, I had to look over the edge. I think I froze for a few seconds. I'm like, I have to see if someone is there. So I looked over the side, no one's there. And I knew, I felt like I just knew that, that there's not an actual physical person there. It's like I knew it was some kind of spirit. I started calling out for my mom, just yelling for her, but she couldn't hear me. Their bedroom was not that close to ours, and if she's sleeping, it's kind of hard to be loud enough for her to come, although it has worked in the past, but I called out for her for a bit, and then I just gave up, and I just 
stayed there, just laid in bed. <laughs> and it was not sleep paralysis because I could move and talk and stuff. I could look, I looked over the edge of the bed to see what was there, but I know for sure I saw it. I still have that image burned into my brain to this day. It was like a woman with dark hair, roughly shoulder length, and she was wearing white, I think. I couldn't tell what it was. Was it like a dress? Was it like a hospital gown? I don't know because I could only see from about shoulders and up. That's one of the scariest things that ever happened to me. And it was at that house, which was not the super scary house. <laughs> so now we're gonna move on to my elementary school. I'll insert some pictures because this was a beast of a building and it's super old and it used to be a nun convent and it's just creepy all around. This is in a small town of a thousand people. And so you could imagine for being an elementary school, like preschool to grade seven, that's a pretty big building and most of the rooms did go unused and weren't actually classrooms. Also, the fourth floor was completely off limits. None of the students were allowed to go up there. Plus there was also an attic and I have been on the fourth floor and I have been in the attic before, but man, those places are creepy. There's this room on the fourth floor that's just scorched because there was a fire and there's like a red handprint on one of the walls. It's, ugh. that place is definitely haunted a lot of the teachers didn't even like stay in there too long after school because so many weird things would happen. Like I know the one teacher, uh, we had these like really high ceilings I remember and there were these really tall windows and one time a teacher was staying after school grading papers and all the blinds just shot up because they're like the roly kind and you like pull on them and let go and they'll go up. and. I believe there were three windows in that classroom and all the blinds just shot up at the same time. Just whoa, creepy stuff like that. I didn't experience a whole lot in that school myself, although there were a couple incidents. One time I felt a big chunk of my hair get picked up and dropped, but there was no one around. It was just something really creepy. I like, turned around and grabbed my hair. No one's there. It was just the corner of the room. Blah. Another time, I was a crossing guard at the time, and so when it was lunchtime, students would either go home or go to the lunchroom, and I didn't do either. I would go and be the crossing guard for the students who were going home for lunch, and then I would go up to the lunchroom and eat my lunch. So I would be, I'd get there late by about 10 to 15 minutes. And since I got to lunch late, I was allowed to stay late to finish eating because normally they funnel all the kids in at the same time into the lunchroom and then they funnel you all out together. But I was allowed to stay late. And usually I would have my friend with me because she was also a crossing guard. So she would be there too. But on this particular day, I was by myself. I don't know if she had already left before me or if she was still eating. I, I forget the story, but the point is I was leaving alone. The staircases in this building have these swinging doors that you go through to get to the staircase and they are heavy. They are massively heavy. It's not like some little breeze is gonna blow the doors open, but I was walking towards the door and I was maybe three feet from it when it just flew open aggressively, just whipped open in front of my face. And I just stood there, I froze and the door just slowly swung, swung back and forth slowly until it stopped and I was like, what was that? I had never seen that ever before. I talked with my classmates that like that's never happened. The doors just don't do that. But it did it that day and oof, it was just creepy. It felt like something rushed past me too, but that might have just been the air moving because the door was flying open. It would blow a breeze into my face. I don't know. But that was creepy. That was my big experience in that school. Wow, this is gonna be a long video because I have a lot more things to talk about. <laughs> so these next events took place at the Gravelberg house. I mean, the farm I lived on was right outside of Gravelberg. It was a 10 minute drive from town. But when my parents divorced, we moved into a house actually in town. And this is where I experienced the bulk of all paranormal things I've experienced. I've never had this many things happen in one place. I don't know what was up with that house. I mean, the previous owners, there was an elderly woman and man and the elderly man passed away in the house. And so that could be part of it. <laughs> I don't know who the previous owners were before that. I don't know the history of the house other than the previous couple that lived there. So some of the events in that house. Uh, first I wrote missing toothbrush. This one could be explained by sleepwalking but I honestly don't think that was me. Like I don't sleepwalk. So I had this toothbrush that just went missing one day and I couldn't find it. So I had to get a new one. And then it was a few days later, I was cleaning out my closet. It was just this really narrow closet. It was pretty much just the size of a door. You opened the door, that was it. That's the closet. <laughs> so it was maybe like 
two feet wide or something. And I had all this stuff piled on the floor because there's only one shelf in there up high. And so I had all this stuff on the ground just piled up a couple feet, just this massive mound. And I started cleaning it up and putting things away. And there was my toothbrush buried under a bunch of stuff. But it's not like I had just thrown a bunch of stuff in there because I hadn't put anything in there recently. And the toothbrush had just gone missing. Like, I don't even know how many days it was, like maybe five days prior. I don't know. It was relatively recently though. It's not like the toothbrush got accidentally thrown in there and then buried by me throwing stuff in there. It was just in the closet, buried under a bunch of crap. And I was so confused. It was just one of those eerie moments where you just feel unsettled when you realize what's happening. <laughs> Another weird thing that happened is one night I was home alone because my brother had a hockey game in another town and my mom drove him and my sister went with him and I was by myself and my mom said, don't lock the back door because we're gonna be home late because normally we leave it unlocked during the day and we'll lock the back door at night only, but it's like a small town, so it's just unlocked throughout the day. Like no one was gonna come in and steal your stuff. And so I thought, cool, all right, just don't lock the door, fine. And so I was home alone that night and I remember hearing the dishes shift in the kitchen, you know, and dishes in the sink just kind of slip and make a noise. That's probably just because they start to slip, but I remember hearing that and that kind of spooked me and I thought, oh, whatever. And then it was around 1 a.m. where I woke up to really loud banging on the back door and it was my mom because she got locked out, but I didn't lock the door. I left it unlocked and it was just the creepiest thing. They're all like, why did you lock the door? And I said, I didn't. And it was just so, ooh, Another weird thing that happened in that house is I was in my room in the basement because the room was actually the previous owner's crafting room. And so there was a desk that jutted out from the wall in the middle of the room and it was kind of built in like a countertop. And there are also countertops on two sides of the room and then cupboards above one of the countertops. So there's lots of storage and stuff like that. So I'd spend a lot of time in there drawing and whatnot. And I was in there and I could suddenly hear the sound of a lot of cardboard boxes being thrown and kicked around. And my room was in the basement and I could hear it in the basement just outside my room, like in the main living room area. And it was so weird. So I got up and I looked and of course there's no one there because I knew no one else was down there. And, but it was just clear as day, these cardboard boxes being thrown around. And it was so odd. There were no boxes, nothing. So I went back, kept working. And then I heard it again and I get up again. I'm like, am I going crazy? This is one of those instances where I legitimately thought maybe I'm going crazy. Like, am I just having an auditory hallucination? What's going on? Cause there's no boxes, but it's loud and I can hear all the boxes being kicked around. It was just so weird. And it happened, I think three times before I gave up and went upstairs because it was just creeping me out too much. I'm trying to save the best stories for last for this house. So what's another little one? One time the TV volume just randomly got super loud, even though it wasn't switching between commercials or anything. It was just the same program and it just suddenly got super loud, like crazy loud where I had to go turn it down. I don't know, that could just be random. Oh, one time I was in the bathroom in the basement and the shower down there is just one of those standing showers. It's not a tub. And we had a shower curtain, not a door on that shower. And one time I was in the bathroom, I don't know what I was doing. I know I was standing at the sink, either I was washing my hands or getting ready, something like that. And something hit the shower curtain from the inside, but hard. Not like a little water drop coming from the, the spout and hitting the shower curtain. It was like someone smacked it from inside the shower. I heard it and like looked over and like you could, I saw it at the same time. It's like I started seeing it in my peripheral vision and turned and could see the shower curtain going back in and <laughs> I feel like I'm ending every story with that. Blah, I just don't like thinking back to it and it's dark in here, it's creepy, okay. <laughs> okay, let's get to the more interesting stories now. So one time I was in my room and it was early morning and I think I was just laying in bed awake, not really doing a whole lot. And I could hear my brother talking in his bedroom because his bedroom was also in the basement. It was just on the other side of the bathroom from mine. So it was like my bedroom, the bathroom, then his bedroom. And our doors actually faced each other. So if I walked straight out of my door, I'd walk straight into his room. And so it was the morning. Yeah, I could hear him talking, but I was wondering who he's talking to. Like, oh, he must be on the phone, whatever. Then eventually I got out of bed and went to go into the bathroom. And as I'm walking into the bathroom, I look into his room and he's not there, his bed is made. And that's when I remembered that he was at a friend's house staying the night and so he wasn't even there at all. And I heard it clear as day and it was not a TV. It was, whew, I don't know. 
So speaking of that bathroom in the basement, there's something that would happen is sometimes I was in there just pooping or whatever I'm doing in there, the lights would flicker. And I know that's a common thing and people say, oh, it's just electrical. And it could have been, it very well could have been, but it happened a couple times and it freaked me out and it wouldn't happen to anyone else in the house. I felt like I was going crazy because no one else is experiencing any of these weird things except me. So I'm like, why? Why is this only happening to me? Am I being targeted? I don't know. But the one time, I think I definitely was pooping this time, the lights were flickering and I just kind of got fed up and I was like, can you stop? And the lights stopped flickering and they didn't flicker again after that. I'm trying to remember if it did happen once several months later Maybe not. I don't know. It's it's really hard to remember, but I think there was kind of just that one period where the lights would always flicker and then I said stop and it stopped. Now I have two more stories that happened in that house and to me these are the two scariest even though the lights were also kind of scary, but these next two were the scariest to me. The staircase leading into the basement was just one straight staircase. It wasn't where you turn as you're going down. It was just one straight staircase and on the one side of you is a wall and on the other side is sort of a railing, like vertical posts that went from the steps all the way to the ceiling. So as you're walking down the stairs, you can look down into the basement and see what's all down there. And the same thing when you're in the basement and someone starts walking down, you can see who's coming down the stairs. And so one time I went downstairs to get something. I don't know what it was, but we kept some stuff in the basement kitchen and in the storage underneath the stairs. And I think I was getting something from the storage under the stairs. And I was walking back around along the side of the stairs and I could see something coming down the stairs. It was about this big, like maybe the size of a golf ball. And it was black but glowing purple. So it's like an orb, but it was black glowing purple and it was making its way down the stairs, but it wasn't following the shape of the steps. It was going smoothly, like it was going down a ramp or something, but it followed, like it it followed the stairs perfectly though, like the same height from all the steps as it moved down. It just smoothly went all the way down the stairs, and then when it got to the bottom, it leveled off and hovered along the floor, and then went under a chair because we had this old rocking chair, like one of those floral ones that has a little skirt at the bottom. And so it went kind of under the skirt thing. And that was that. That one freaked me out so much because it was something that I was clearly watching. I could not take my eyes off of it. And I followed it with my vision. It wasn't something that was just a split second thing I saw. I saw it for several seconds and was watching it. So I think that's why that one is so creepy to me is because I was just clearly looking at it. It wasn't something just zipping by. I could see it the whole time. Now this last story is the scariest out of all the stories. So I was sleeping and I woke up in the middle of the night. And again, this is not sleep paralysis. I could move. I was fine. I've actually never had sleep paralysis. Uh, What happened is there is this butterfly balloon that I got from some event in town. It was filled with helium originally and it's kind of like a plastic material and see-through. And I loved it so much that I kept it once it was deflated and stuck it on my wall just as a little decoration. And below it was a baseboard heater. So sometimes when the baseboard heater would heat up, it would make the balloon crinkle. So I woke up in the middle of the night to that crinkling sound and that's not normally something that would wake me up, but it was crinkling and immediately stopped. I only heard it for a few seconds and the crinkling stopped. And then immediately after that, I could hear a knocking sound and it was coming from the corner of my room farthest from me, like I was in the middle of a wall. So it was on the back wall across from my bed and it was in the corner where the two countertops met. In the cupboards below it, I would keep all our board games, but the Monopoly or whatever it was, I didn't put it away because I was kind of lazy and I just tossed it on top of the counter. And it was a knocking sound on the board game box. It was kind of just like knock, knock, knock on the box. It was weird because it was immediately after the crinkling of the balloon, which yeah, could have been the baseboard heater. Maybe the baseboard heater cut out right as I was waking up. I don't know, but it was just strange timing. So it was crinkle, crinkle, stop, knocking, stop. And then as soon as the knocking stopped, I could hear knuckles crackling right next to my head. Like someone's cracking their knuckles right in my ear. It was just like boom, 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 all those things one right after the other and I freaked out. I threw my covers over my head and just froze. I just, well, I was petrified. That was one of the scariest things that ever happened to me ever. And it might not sound like much, but when you're living that, it's terrifying. It was just 
all three things combined back to back. Blech. I just remembered something else that happened in that house that I didn't write down. I had this Polaroid camera and it would make miniature Polaroids. And one time I was taking a picture of our dog because we had just gotten Maddie and she was sitting on my bed in my bedroom and I took a picture of her and next to her in the picture, it looked like there's a person and honestly, it looks it's really blurry and hard to see, but to me, it looks like the person who I saw watching me sleep in my bunk bed at the other house. It was kind of like dark shoulder length hair and looked like they're wearing some kind of white gown, maybe like a hospital gown. But again, it was, it's one of those things where it could have just been a defect with the film and maybe it made some kind of a smudge and it just so happened to look like a person, but oh, it, ugh. I keep doing that. I just keep going bleh because these stories are bleh. So then after that, we moved to Medicine Hat. Well, it was me, my mom, and my sister. We all moved to Medicine Hat because my mom got a job there. And we moved into a house that was brand new. No one had ever lived in it before. It was, they were just building a bunch of new houses, expanding the city, and we moved into one of them. Woo! And honestly, not a whole lot happened in that house. It was pretty tame. So this first story didn't actually happen to me. It happened to my sister and she told me about it, but she had this little porcelain cross above her closet and the one time she came into her room and the cross was completely on the other side of her room it's not like it could have fallen and bounced all the way over there like no so that's a little creepy oh i i did write one thing here which honestly is something i've felt multiple places but i wrote the feeling of someone sitting on a bed like kind of like that depression when someone sits on a bed next to you i had that a few times at that house but I don't think it was exclusive to that house. I'm not sure. The main thing that spooked me about that house is there were a couple times where I would be in the basement and I could hear someone on the main floor walking in high heels on the hardwood. And this wasn't unusual for me to hear this because my mom often wore heels to work and when she would come home from work, I would hear her high heels on the hardwood floor. But there were a couple times where I could clear as day hear her walking when she wasn't actually home. I'd go upstairs to go greet her and she wasn't even home yet. And my sister had this happen too, so it wasn't just me. It makes me wonder if it's possible that living people can leave behind residual energy the same way some spirits can. Because, you know, there's active hauntings where the spirit's supposedly physically there. And then there are the residual hauntings where it's almost like it's replaying an event that happened or something. It's just like an imprint of the person who used to live at that time. I feel like it's like that. It was like an imprint of my mom, but she's still alive. So it makes me wonder if years down the road, other people will hear her high heels on the floors. <laughs> So that was it for that house. That's all I can remember anyway. It wasn't a really spooky house or anything. I do have one thing written down under the category camping. So it didn't happen at our house, but it happened at our campsite. We have a seasonal site and we would go there all the time every summer. And my mom still goes there, but I don't so much now that I don't live there anymore. But uh, us kids would usually sleep in the tents and then the parents would sleep in the campers. And I remember I woke up the one morning and I think this was a, an auditory hallucination, but it was just so weird. I basically woke up and there was this loud deafening sound in my ears of a huge crowd of people talking. Like imagine you're in a giant room just packed with people and everyone's talking at the same time. It was like that where I woke up and all I could hear were people loudly talking and it was so loud, like hurting my ears and it lasted maybe like seven seconds and then it was gone. Seven seconds is still a decent amount of time, like just sitting there like, what's happening? Again, I wasn't paralyzed, I didn't have sleep paralysis, but it was just so weird and so loud. So is that paranormal? I don't know. It, it was just something really weird and I thought I would include it in this video. Okay, so next let's talk about when I moved to Vancouver. I've had the odd weird thing where I'd be in my apartment and I could hear footsteps on the carpet when I'm the only one home, weird things like that. I'd freak out, grab one of Christian's swords and <laughs> sit there with the sword like, hmm. <laughs> But other than that, not really much happened in the apartments I lived in. But the first apartments I lived in when I moved to Vancouver were actually student housing apartments because I went to the Art Institute of Vancouver, but 
the residence was not on property. It was elsewhere in the city, and it was actually just one of those really tall apartment complexes, and it wasn't just students who lived there. Only certain rooms were occupied by students, and the rest were just regular people living in their apartment. And towards the end of my stay there, I became an RA, which is one of the people kind of in charge of student housing stuff. Like if you're a student and you need help, you can contact an RA, whatever. And one of our jobs is that if there was an apartment that we were no longer going to be using and we were going to be relinquishing back to the apartment manager people, we would have to move all the furniture out of it and bring it down into the storage units. And it was kind of the same thing where if a new student was moving in, but this apartment only had three beds instead of four and we needed the fourth bed, we would have to go down to the storage units and get the bed and bring it up, stuff like that. We had to haul stuff in and out of the storage lockers. So these storage lockers were in the basement of the building and it was really creepy down there. I've actually vlogged down there in the early vlog days. <laughs> so one day we were kind of in and out a lot, moving things out of a storage locker, I think, to bring into one of the apartments. I can't remember, but we were going up and down, in and out a lot. And sometimes we'd be together moving larger items or we would split up and carry smaller items. And there are a couple different incidents that happened that day. So the one time I was alone, I could hear one of the locks on a storage unit rattling aggressively, really loud, just rattling. And I was the only one down there. It was so freaky. <laughs> and then another trip the same day, I heard a child talking. Again, there was no one down there. I even went, hello, is anyone here? And walked around and looked, no one's down there. And I was so freaked out. And then the other RA came up to me after and was like, okay, can we start sticking together because those storage units are really freaky. I'm hearing things. And I was like, me too. Like, let's stick together. So we didn't split up after that. But I have been down there by myself several times since, but it wasn't just me experiencing things. So that really helped validate it. Ooh, plus after hearing the kid's voice, after moving a few more things out of one of the storage units in the back of the storage unit on the ground, I found a bunch of little toys, kind of like little animal figures. And I remember seeing like a little piece of fence, just little toy animals. And I was like, uh, excuse me, after hearing this child voice, I find these toys here. Like, <laughs> Now let's advance to the house I currently live in. This is just a house we're renting and not a whole lot has happened here. And I'm not convinced this place is haunted, but there have been some weird things. One time I was sitting in here doing art or whatever I was doing at my desk and I heard a bathroom drawer close. The bathroom is right outside my art room just around the corner and I could hear a drawer close in the bathroom and I was like, okay, that's weird. And I could see both the cats. I was like, it's not the cats. Because <laughs> usually when I hear a weird noise, I'm like, oh, it's just people outside or, oh, it's just the cats. But that was pretty clear and pretty loud. Another really weird thing that happened is one time I was in the kitchen and it was nighttime and I was looking out the kitchen window because it's right in front of the sink and across the street from me is a building and I could see a shadow of a woman reflecting or being, not reflecting, just being cast onto the side of the building. It was a woman and it was going down the street past the building, kind of like someone's walking down the street, but it was just their shadow with no person. And it's not like it was something from inside the building because the shadow was not just on the windows, but on the bottom part underneath the windows too. And it looked like a woman with a really poofy skirt, kind of like one of those ones where the butt poofs out a little bit, one of those olden day type dresses. That's what it was like. And she's just walking down the street. That was another one of those things where I'm seeing it clearly. It's not like it's something I saw by the corner of my eye. I was watching it and I was like, what is that? And then the final thing, well, it's happened on multiple occasions is that the TV downstairs would turn itself on. It happened a lot after we first moved in where I would come downstairs and the TV's just on and I'm like, what are you doing? Or I'd come out of my art room, the TV's on. And that was really odd and it stopped for a really long time. And then there were a couple more times where it just randomly turned on. This is weird. There's like a cluster of it after we moved in, then it stopped. And then there were a couple other random incidents, but it hasn't happened anytime recently. There was one other spooky thing, but it's probably just like gravity or something. <laughs> one time I was down in the living room down here in the basement and I was using a ghost hunting app and it sounded like it said my name, which is weird. But what happened is the controller, the PS4 controller that was sitting on the table fell onto the ground while I was doing this ghost hunt. I'll include the clip, but it might be that it just slipped, but it was just really, really freaky timing. <laughs> I should have this like facing the TV or something. <laughs> Listen, you can see me. 
and the TV. Now, I also have a section written down in here called PEI, like Prince Edward Island. I was just there actually at the beginning of September on a family vacation and we rented a house and it was pretty new and bright and beautiful, but there were a lot of weird things that happened in that house. It's all documented in the vlogs. If you wanna see that, you can just head over to my vlog channel and go back to the beginning of September. But for example, me and my husband were sleeping in bed, all of a sudden the light in our room turns on. That also happened to my brother-in-law and his wife. I also got this really spooky voicemail at night when I was the only one up and it just sounded like a weird croaky voice and my brother-in-law also got a weird voicemail. Again, it could just be coincidence, but it was just like, why do these things keep happening? And also the one time I got up in the middle of the night and the light to the basement was turned on. Also, when we first got to the house, I was exploring it and I could hear someone banging around in the basement. And I stopped and I was like, is anyone here? And I was vlogging at the time and no one was down there. It could have been sound carrying through the house, who knows, but that house was creepy. I was spooked at night in that house. I would also just hear people in rooms in general, even in the daytime, I would hear someone in a room when no one's in that room. Just such a weird house. Now, that's pretty much all I have for spooky stories. I do have a couple things written down here that are just strange. So before we moved into this house, we lived in an apartment here in Vancouver, and the one evening I was sitting on the couch next to Christian, my husband, well at the time he was my boyfriend, and suddenly I was just overcome by something like I was watching him I don't know if we were watching TV or he was playing a video game it was something and then all of a sudden I was overcome with this feeling that someone was dying and it was as if the person had come to me and they're kind of confused they didn't really realize they were dead and so I had to tell them it was like I was talking but I didn't have my mouth open it was but I was consciously saying words like I'm having a conversation without actually moving my mouth it was weird anyway I was like telling this person that they were dead and that they had to pass on I said if you see any kind of light move towards that like your time's over that kind of thing and I don't know it was weird I'm like I'm not a psychic that I know of but this was just such a weird experience and then it ended and I sat there and I looked over at Christian and I wanted to say to him, someone just died. I almost said that, but I was like, he's gonna think I'm crazy, like, and I've never experienced anything like this before, so maybe I am just crazy. So I didn't say anything and I regret not saying anything. Um, the next day, Christian's parents called and said that his grandmother had died and it was at night, almost like the exact time I experienced that. I mean, I didn't look at a clock, but it was right around that time and so I'm like was that her because I didn't feel like I necessarily knew the person but that makes sense because I've never met that grandmother of his it almost feels disrespectful to say oh that was her because I don't know like that could have been some random person or maybe I'm, I'm just weird I don't know but the timing was perfect it was so weird because Christian's parents said when she passed away but that's Ontario time, so then you subtract the three hours to see what time it was for us, and it was just spot on. I was like, oh my god. Was that her? I don't know. And just recently, like two weeks ago or something, I was laying in bed trying to fall asleep, but I was just kind of awake, couldn't fall asleep, and I was overcome with this vision of someone dying, and so far nothing has come from it, but I'm actually really scared because I'm like, oh, last time something like this happened, the person was actually dead, although that was more like someone was suddenly dead and they approached me. This was more like I was witnessing someone's death from their point of view and it was just so vivid and just smacked me like out of nowhere. It was like, boof, ah, witnessing this thing and then doof, done. And I was like, what was that? <laughs> and for some reason, my mind thinks it's the stratosphere in Vegas and someone falling from it face first. It might not be that building because I didn't see anything identifiable. I just felt like it was that building. And I'm like, well, maybe you're thinking that because like, you know, Vegas, you've been to Vegas. I never went up the stratosphere or anything, but like, meh. And so I immediately took out my phone and made a little message in the notes app because I'm like, this time, if this ends up being true, I need evidence of this. And then uh, a few days later, I remembered that my dad is about, was about to go to Vegas. He's there right now. He's in Vegas right now. And I'm like, oh, like I'm freaking out. Once I made that connection, because I made that connection again at night while I was laying in bed, I was like, oh my God, Christian, I have to tell you about this thing I experienced and why I'm suddenly freaked out because my dad's going to Vegas. And so I'm like, I don't know. 
couldn't say anything to my dad because I didn't want to freak him out, but uh, I wanted to be like, don't go to the stratosphere. <laughs> and was that even Vegas? I don't know. Maybe I was witnessing a real person dying right then and there and it was just from some building. I just, I don't know. That might've just been my mind playing tricks on me. Blah. But it was just so vivid and so sudden that I, it's creeped me out. So then there's this other thing that happened recently. This must have been, I felt like it was like three weeks ago. It must've been more like five weeks ago because this is just right before I went on keto again. <laughs> I was at McDonald's and this lady approached me while I was waiting for my food. And she was asking me if I thought I was very intuitive because she sensed that I was very intuitive and asked me if I knew about indigo children because she thought I was an indigo child or something like I don't know it was really weird she didn't seem off her rocker like she seemed very sane very normal didn't seem like she was on drugs and she was just questioning me about this stuff and I was just like Ugh. like I'd never heard of indigo children before but she just thought I had this intuition about me and I'm like maybe I don't, I don't know oh we got a kitty cat hey baby <laughs> anyway those are all my paranormal experiences that I can think of I might have missed a thing or two here and there, but at least the juicy stuff, I think, is all covered. I haven't had the craziest of experiences. Like I said, it's a bunch of kind of smaller stuff. It's not like ghosts just start throwing things across the room in front of me. Well, maybe that PS4 controller. I don't know. <laughs> but yeah, it's, I don't know, just odd stuff. And I do feel like I'm kind of a magnet for some of this stuff because... I would experience a lot of it, but my family members wouldn't, although there are some things that they did experience that I experienced, so I don't know. I just feel like so many other people experience things that are way more major, like full-on poltergeist activity or just tons of figures and stuff. I don't know. I hope you guys enjoyed this story time video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoy the trick-or-treating bun buns, and I will see you in my next video. Hopefully it'll be up on Saturday, but I don't know because I'm going to be having internet issues over this next week, so hopefully the video is up on time. <laughs>